little um, bright, so I've been trying to get the the, the lighting pretty, um, you know, where the glare isn't too bad. I've been doing my best with the lighting. Anyhow, this will have to do. Um, yeah, so I wanted to talk about, um, I guess, go a little more into the whole Wexit thing, and you know, Wexit, my thoughts, and, you know, uh, um, a continuation of um, my previous video of Wexit, my thought, I, I guess. You know, is Trudeau our last prime minister? Now, uh, as, I mean, as Trudeau, you know, uh, put out a, lot, a while ago, you know, he, he, he thinks, you know, Canada doesn't have any core identity, it does not, ha you know, insulting, I mean, insulting Quebec, you know, I was like, dude, you're, you're French Canadian, you, you know the history of French Canadians in Canada, right, right? I don't think he cares, you know. Um, I don't think he cares at all. Um, and then he, he ends up saying that we don't have, uh, Canada does not have uh, core values. I mean, he, he just says all this, non, this nonsense bull, bull, bull. But, um, you know, you say something enough times, people start to believe it, you know. Um, I believe it's Stalin, um, or Goebbels who ended up saying that, you know, interesting, eh? interesting, that, uh, Trudeau's sounding like one of them, anyhow, you know, uh, eh, Justin Trudeau's post-nationalism rhetoric, it seems to be bearing fruit, you know, um, it's sad, you know, it, it really is sad that, um, you know, Canada seems like it is breaking apart. It is breaking apart. I mean, we have such a, we have such a history, and you, you, you just, every day now, the whole Wexit thing, um, you can't, buy, one, you can't blame them. First of all, you cannot blame them. At the same time, it's like I am just watching Justin Trudeau. I mean, this is this is, is he's going to consider this a win. Sorry, I mean he will go down outside of Quebec. Even that, even Quebec, you know, outside of Montreal, he is not liked. In Quebec, outside of the island of Montreal, right, he is not liked anywhere. And then the GTA, right? And then the two areas that got him re-elected, uh, even though a minority government, it's Toronto and Montreal. Everywhere else, he wasn't doing well. And the areas that did well uh, were, um, you know, one of those, you know, swing, one of those swing areas. You know, uh, the other uh, winners were the NDP that, you know, you know, you know, people who would have voted liberal, but, uh, were turned off by Trudeau. So they voted for Jagmeet Singh, right? I mean, again, you have a corridor in Ontario along the 401 and along where, you know, the, the St. Lawrence River, where you can see America, if New York counts anyway, um, where it's all conservative, right? And then you hit, uh, s certain uh, populate, highly populated areas where it's either NDP or, or you know, and then you, when you hit Toronto, um, you know, where the majority of the 121 seats in Ontario are, um, oh, they voted for Trudeau. You know, they voted and that determined it. So to Toronto and Montreal... So, again, the whole post-nationalism thing, it, it, it's, it's come back. I mean, this is the whole thing, right? Um, and it's, it, it's just, it really is like Canada has been, has not been this divided in forever. I mean, if a referendum was held in, in the West, and West including 
Manitoba. Every time I hear about Wexit, it's just Saskatchewan and Manitoba, uh, Saskatchewan and Alberta that are mentioned, and I rarely hear um, Manitoba. However, now there's a separation movement in Manitoba. My home province has a separation movement, but every time I'm hearing about Wexit, they only mention um, Alberta and Saskatchewan. You know. Um, now, I mean. Again, if the West, the West is, uh, it's they're they're falling into it, you know. Um, what's kill What's killing uh, the West is uh, foreign funded foreign interest groups that are allies of Justin Trudeau's, and they've put in. Uh, you know, they. This is divide and conquer. This is literally divide and conquer, and it's it's bearing fruit. You know, um, they they have they have just cause to not like like the, all the east. You know, the you know. So I mean, it's blue from Kenora well, one. It's blue from. Uh, the the St. Lawrence corridor, the St. Lawrence to, I suppose, um, Oshawa, um, I guess Oshawa. You know, so you you come along when you when you just hit the Ontario, and it's blue, blue, blue. You hit Cornwall. It's a bit of a little bit of NDP, and it's blue, blue. And you can see, you know, oh, look across the river, you see America. But, uh, so it, uh, then it's, once you get the Kenora, though, from Kenora to British Columbia, it's, it went blue. Right, so. It's so divided. You know, um, but I, I just see how the West is going gonna to be exploited. Uh, by the same groups that have destroyed Alberta's economy. Um, push for the balkanization of Canada. You know, um, you know the, U the national unity is absolutely destroyed, and I really do think Trudeau is going to see this as a success. You know, not a failure. Honestly, you know what he wants: the whole UN. He wants to see that the UN uh, and what's going to be left of Canada. I mean. Sorry, I think Di Diane Francis. Look, look into her. Um, she wrote a book called *Merger of the Century*. It was about the all of Canada joining the states. Well, I am a proud Canadian until it until it ends, you know, until it ends, and even maybe you know, I guess my patriotic videos that I made. Uh, about Canada will be all archivist, you know, old, I have old footage of, um, you know, of Canada and its heyday, uh, when, uh, liberal prime ministers sounded like Donald Trump, you know, when, <laughs> I'm not kidding, you know, when Canada, uh, had a strong identity, had a strong pride in its in its nation when we had a, a, a decent uh, respect for our military when we had a decent sized military you know um, so many Canadian soldiers died for can our our values our I for our freedom right and Trudeau comes out of nowhere I mean the liberals were about the merge of the NDP he comes out of left field brings the Liberal Party back from the dead. Unbelievable. And he, the most anti-military guy, uh, that's when he pushes the whole post-nationalism nonsense uh, out there. And it's like history doesn't matter to him. You know, and that's where he can get away with the whole we don't have identity, we don't have culture... Like, our soldiers fought... What were our soldiers fighting for in World War II? I mean, we're coming off to Remembrance Day. I'm, I bet you anything 
Trudeau's not going to do. He's going to do as little as possible on November, um, on Remembrance Day, November 5th. November 5th? Or November um, Excuse me. Um, but no, seriously. Um, he's, he's going to, you know, probably uh, go overseas or something. Uh, or go on vacation. Uh, do something that's not honoring soldiers. Right? Um, he has this... Uh, I don't know, an antip antipathy, Is that, would that be the correct word, of uh, towards the military. I don't understand it. Um, anyway, it's like, well, our World War I, World War II, our soldiers fought for, well, back then, what they knew. Society, if you look at it at the world today, compared to World War One and World War Two, and what they were fighting for, the Canadian identity, Canadian values, when we had values, when we had a strong identity, and we had a strong identity up until Pierre Elliott Trudeau, and it started to dwindle and dwindle. A little it, it, bits and parts were going, you know, our identity was being chipped away, you know, and the whole idea of being a global citizen, right? Um, as being more important, and no, it isn't. You know, I am Canadian, you know, but I see where what Trudeau's rhetoric of what he's wanting to do, I mean, again, West leaves, Quebec leaves, you know. Quebec doesn't get their equalization money, and they don't deserve it from Alberta. Ontario was paying for it at the beginning to keep on Quebec in Canada, uh, until they can't couldn't afford it, so Albert. That's when Alberta flipped the bill, right? Um, so west the Wexit goes, Quebec goes. Maritimes are now disconnected. Now you have Ontario, and let's just say the Maritimes too. Maritimes, Newfoundland, PEI, they cannot afford. Uh, who knows? Maybe they do try to become a, a, their own countries, but I bet you there'd be a deal to join the United States. So it goes, it's connected to the whole, what Diane Francis is talking about, the merger of the century, where slowly, you know, to save the debt, you know, what Ontario, how much Ontario owes, you know, it owes more, what, what is it, o owes more than California? Or something like that? It's nuts. You know, so I can see these deals happening if once, what, whether it was Quebec or the West, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. One, you know, one goes, the other goes. And I'm, oh, if they're gone, why can't we leave? Ottawa. Uh, oh, here's an ultimatum. Uh, we'll stay if you give me so much money. Ontario's already in debt, and now the West is gone. Um, oh, we can't. Bye. Right now, Ontario is screwed. Um, it's going to be a you know at this point, Canada is kicked out of the G7. Canada is um, you know weak. It's going to be there is no Canada at this point. The Canadian dollar gone. You know so you have these and then you have, you will have the same groups that destroyed uh, Alberta's economic engine. In the world, while you know uh, the Rockefeller groups, the Soros groups, the World Wi World Wildlife Federation groups, same groups are going to target what's left of you know Canada, and then boom, here's a solution. Um, now that the British North America has balkanized completely. You're going to have, you know, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and maybe even Manitoba, they join together. They're going to be uh, similar to either Belgium or Germany. And the solution's going to be North, a North American Union. That's going to be the solution by the same groups that have been just trying to, to destroy Alberta. So they're going to put forward the solution of, oh, let's do what the Europe has done. Let's do an EU. Uh, let's have a world parliament. Right, I think Greta Thunberg, Greta, who interfered in our election, just like Obama, 
interfered in, in our election. Doesn't matter though, because this is Canada, right? No one, there is no accountability in this country. We really need to change our system in this country. We have to have, we need to be a republic or something. We need to have, you know, where the West is, gets their say, and it's not just Toronto and Montreal who dictate who's going to be, um, uh, you know, the leader of the country. We need to have term limits in Canada. We don't have term, come on, I mean, it's really that r ridiculous. It's that, like, crazy. So that's the solution, you know, we're going to have this, you know, world parliament, we'll have it, it'll be, you know, it'll be, it'll be set out of either New York City, um, it won't be in Canada. So Trudeau gets uh, his wish. He gets to work in outside of Canada because he had he has no uh, in many many interviews he's had um, he has no respect outside of Quebec, but even Quebec, I mean he's such a fraud. Oh you know, yeah, Quebec is better. Uh, Canada belongs to Quebec. Um, the best prime ministers, his dad, Mar Brian Maroney. Uh, Jean Chrétien, um, I, mean, I don't even think he mentioned, uh, I mean, all the prime ministers he mentioned that he thought was the best. It was like, are you kidding me? Another 20th century. I think that was the, or like, not best prime ministers ever. But he said, the, well, the best prime ministers all came out of Quebec in the 20th century. It was John, I mean, John, D, he didn't mention John Diefenbaker. He didn't even mention uh, Mackenzie King, who was a liberal. You know, I mean, not from Quebec, right? So in this interview, he's saying, oh, Quebec, but, you know, yeah, I, I believe Quebec is, I am, well, I am a liberal, so of course. Of course I believe Quebec is better than everybody else. I am a liberal, Right. And so, no, uh, I can see him leaving, working in New York, you know, no more Cano, oh, well, I mean, I really, really have, I don't, I really think he has no interest, and this is why we have Wexit, this is where we are, right, where we really are uh, in a scenario where he's, no matter what happens to him, what he's, you know, He's suing uh, the rebel media and True North um, media agencies so soon. Why? Why now? You know, it's uh, timing. Why now? So my guess is Justin Trudeau's having trouble getting a cabinet to follow along with every single thing he wants, or they're asking for a particular position that he's not willing to give, and so they're going to go, we're not going to work with you. So I say we're going to be in an election in six months, and he doesn't want the rebel media or uh, um, True North, you know, Candace Malcolm and Andrew Lawton uh, asking him hard questions in the debates uh, in six months. That's why I think he's he's going after them now, uh, trying to sh you know attack freedom of press, right? And I know Canada. We don't. We technically have it. We technically don't. I I hate that. Um, you know. Anyway, I think we really need a new system. Um, um, it's sad where we are. It's sad where we are. Um, I mean, I'm can I'm Canadian through. I mean, my I'm. I call myself Jay Canuck for a reason. When my friends called me Jay, when I was in, you know, high school and college, you know, I, I was, everyone knew me in, in certain ways. They either called me by my last name or they called me, you know, by my full name or they called me Jay. And so, and I, I love Canadian history, you know, so Jay Canuck. It's, I'm seeing our history. I mean, again, we're so intertwined with the states, so I respect the states, but I, I also respect our 
our Canada's history goes way before Canada was a country. You know, the French Canadians, right? And going back to the French Canadian thing, the pipeline, right? The majority, the poll was done, a majority of normal average Quebecers would rather have oil from Alberta than Saudi Arabia. But Quebec politicians say, "Oh no, no, it's, it's no, it's, no. There's no interest in a, a pipeline in here. No, it's all baloney. It's all you know, money from their money. They're getting money from Saudi Arabia, something similar to that type of deal. And so no, you know. And so it, it just breeds more of the divide and conquer, you know." Um, Quebec wants all the power, it wants, you know, go oh yeah, Canada belongs, right, Trudeau saying, you know, Canada belongs to Quebec, not the other way, right, anyway, no, so this is where we are, you know, I mean, our history, wow, so, I mean, the, from Jacques Cartier to, you know, Champlain, Quebec City, Amazing, one of the most beautiful cities in North America, right? Is, is Quebec City. Um, and then you have the great history of the English, Wolf, you know, um, beating the French, right? Uh, allowing the Quebecois to keep their culture keep their religion, you know, despite the fact that the British kicked out the Acadians and sent them down to um, uh, Louisiana, which was not a, uh, which was, this is prior to the um, Louisiana Purchase. Um, so it, New Louisiana was still a um, French colony. So the Acadians were sent down there and um but uh the Quebec the Quebecois are still there they're still here you know the English the who won the people who won uh you know well, they they kept their side of the bargain the Quebecois still have their culture they still have their well they well, after the quiet revolution they don't have much of a religion anymore but the Catholic you know, there's still remnants of that. So, uh, there, 500 years, Quebec still Quebec culture is still around. You know, um, no, 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 no. You know, uh, it's uh, it's it's really interesting of how, how things are playing out. Come back, you know, best come on, come on. Um, but that is one big particular part of our history, you know. We, the the English allowed Quebec to, you know, to stay. They could have been, they could have easily have just done the, the exact same thing to the Quebecois, to the Acadians. No, we're going to send you down to, uh, you know, we won in a war, right? So the victors usually get to make the demand. Well, now you're out. We're going to send you down to Louisiana. The English did not do that. They said, as long as you, you know, you know, uh, pledge allegiance to our monarch, um, then yeah, you can stay, and you can keep your culture and your religion. And which was Catholicism all the way up to the forties, and then there was a quiet revolution, and now well they're just yeah they're still a little Catholic, but no that, I think uh, the, that quiet revolution uh, that they had in Quebec was a little bit you know of their you know culture, but not nothing big. I mean that was themselves. They did that to themselves. Anyway. You know, so you have that as our history. I mean, and you had it, the 
the neat thing about how America is intertwined with Canada is, well, the War of 1812. Again, this is, again, prior to uh, Canada as a nation. You know, if we ended up... A lot of the British regulars uh, who went down to the States were, in, one, based out of Canada. Two, some were, you know, Canadian, Canadian. Um went down the burn down the White House and you know that 1812 forgotten I don't know why they call it the forgotten war because at the same time Napoleon was going on but we gave America their anthem you know so I mean I don't know um, things work out you know just what do you call that not serendipity um the butterfly effect or things, you know. I mean, and that really did create, you know, uh, American identity where that the flag was waving. I forget the fort, you know, um, you know the British were bombing and the flag was, it's, it was still going, man. It was still waving. But, no, oh, yeah, it was, you know, it was that particular war. And I'm not, I believe it was after the, the Americans sacked York, which is modern-day Toronto. Um, and I believe we had a parliament. Again, we were still a colony, but we had some type of governance. And there was a, the parliament, the gover government building was in York, in Toronto, at the, at the time, and the Americans sacked it. So this was kind of retribution. Uh, burning down the White House. Um, no, our history is so intertwined, you know, and again, with the, America's Revolutionary War, you know, the empire, the American Empire loyalists who did not want, you know, they were afraid, they didn't want to die, they so they they fled north, Founded a whole bunch of towns in eastern Canada, upper what was upper and lower Canada, you know, and then right down to the American Civil War, man, the threat. Now at this point, upper and lower Canada, French Can French Canada and English Canada, you know, Canada was very small. I mean, you know, we were together now. We were known as the United Province of Canada. Uh, we were the largest colony in uh, Britain at the time, and we were going, oh my goodness, in the American Civil War, um, we had a threat of invasion, uh, veiled, pardon me, we had a veiled threat of invasion, you know, choose your, you know, who, whose side you're choosing, um, but in Canada, our um, foreign policy laid with Britain, so our policy was with whatever the Queen says it was, and the, it was uh, neutrality. But obviously, of course, and with re good reason, you know, well, you know, you're right next to us, you know. Um, so, you know, Britain's 3,000 miles away, uh, choose a side. And then avail, or just just to uh, let you know, um, I forget it. What it was a Secretary of State at the time who uh, said they were thinking of annexing Canada altogether. Um, it was a veiled threat, right? Um, that was the motivation. Like, oh no, like just the, the threat of invasion or the possibility, the, this the the very possibility of invasion, um, motivated the United problem. Well, shoot, you know, what are we gonna do? Uh, we asked Britain for help. They said, <laughs> no, uh, we're not going to get uh, into a land war, right? We're not gonna get into a land. They already have a, their military is now a million people. And, you know, what's in Canada? Nothing. You know? So, we'll send a few, we'll send a few Brits. We'll, friend a f we'll send a few Redcoats uh, to, you know, just make you shut up. 
So essentially that was Britain's way of saying, we really don't care about your colony anymore. You know, so the Americans, you know, annex you, well, less for us to worry about. You know, um, seriously. I mean, that's how John A. MacDonald, our founding father, and even George Brown, uh, who were bitter enemies. And George Brown was an uh, opposition liberal. John A. MacDonald was conservative. This is where I go back into the idea that conservatives create countries and liberals destroy countries. Anyway, it goes another time. Uh, Trudeau's a liberal and he's destroying one. Um, or he has destroyed a nation if things get any worse. Anyway, um, anyway, this was one of, the, one of the only times where George Brown and John A. actually were able to find, hey, let's join British North America colonies together into one entity, you know, because, and then pointing out the obvious, well, after speaking to the Governor General, they really don't, Britain really doesn't care about us anymore, so, you know, why would they not allow us to join the other, you know, colonies and put them, the British North American colonies and put them together? You know, um, and sure enough, that's what we did, right? Because uh, this was the era, was after the Civil War, it was the idea of the Amer a manifest destiny. America has a destiny to uh, conquer North America uh, completely. So there was a colony in, you know, British Columbia. There was a colony in the Maritimes. And not until the 1940s, Newfoundland finally joined Canada uh, officially. Um, but... Um, this is our this is the this is our nation. I mean, this is the history of our nation, you know, and it's like, thanks to America. I mean, I don't know. I mean, without the American Civil War, without that threat of American invasion, uh I who knows, maybe Canada would have still been a colony or maybe um who knows where Canada would be. But where I see things going now, you know, I mean, it's You know, because of uh, because of debt, because of Trudeau's post-nationalism, because of Trudeau's post-Canadianism, we don't have an identity. We're, you know, just dirt. You know, borderless society. You know, we're nothing. That type of thing. Yeah, you know, Diane Francis's murder of the century. Sure, for all the money that Canada owes without the West, without Quebec, it's like, whoa. Ontario is Canada? No. We need a new system. I think Canada would be better as a republic. I think it would uh, solve a lot of problems where you have term limits now. We can elect our own senators. You know, we can... You know, you say, still use the same uh, government buildings, just repurpose them. You know, I mean, how how our system is laid out now, I mean, I, the checks and balances is not as... I don't know. I mean, our system is really, really, really flawed. Uh, I mean, Trudeau can run as many times as he wants. And if in a system where Toronto and Montreal dictate who becomes prime minister, the West gone, uh, even even with the West, how the system is set up today, now, Toronto and Montreal decide who's prime minister, he's a dictator for a lot. I mean, literally, he's going to be, you know, the Huffington Post wrote an article about Justin Trudeau that Trudeau will become a dictator. And why? The Huffington Post is a leftist publication. Just saying. It, you know, so...
I don't know, it really makes me sad that Canada is lit literally breaking apart and um, just our soldiers fought for, if it does, ha if it does happen, if, if it does happen, I'm hoping there's a lot of patriots and, you know, there's Andrew Shear resigns and we get some Doug Ford type, you know, we get some someone to revamp the Conservative Party, because I cannot see, uh, even though I s support, because there was no one in my in my writing to support, you know, no one who was um, going to do well within the PPC in my writing, you know, but I was supporting Mark Friesen, supporting Kelly Day, I would have voted for them in an instant. Um... You know, Salim Ansoor, Laura Lynn Thompson, you know, go check their YouTube channels out. Definitely, they'll really enlighten, they really are awesome people. Um, but I cannot see, um, I mean, obviously after this election, um, you know, just overnight, you know, okay, now everyone... It's going to um, landslide PPC or landslide even a landslide. Cons I mean, really, the conservative are the conservative party really needs to be revitalized, revamped. You know, um, again, Andrew Shear needs Andrew Shear needs to resign. Um, he doesn't think he needs to. I think he needs to. Because it looks like we're going to be going into an election in six months. Why is he suing journalists now? You know, because the same journalists that asked him tough questions. You know, and so it's a little too uh, coincidental. I'm like, why? Why now? It's timing. Why now? Anyway, so I think I'm done with my little rant. You know, it, it's just, you know, it's funny where I am. Again, I'm in that blue r rural corridor of, you know, reliably conservative. And then you go all the way up, you know, it's, then you head into, I guess, the Oshawa area with the GTA. That's all liberal. The majority of the 121 seats are in that area. You know, and then the further you go north, the bigger the you know the um, the fewer the ridings are, the the seats are, but the larger the right, the larger it is, the alert you know, they got a, a huge NDP area. And it looks huge because well, it's the riding is massive. No one lives there, right? And then when you hit Kenora, um, it's conservative. And then all up from Kenora all the way to British Columbia. It's blue, you know, so we're such a divided country. I, I really just don't want our country to put it this way. I don't want Trudeau to get what he wants, and that is Canada. I think, I really do think, I think he wants Canada to break up so he can run, uh, get his seat in New York with a either at the UN or newly formed if Canada does balkanize because of what the West goes, so does the East, you know, and then on, you know, whatever, whatever's left are stuck with a lot of debt and they'll want a solution. America will come, oh, well, we have a solution. We'll buy you, you know, and um, that there's Canada. 156 years of 56, 55. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, failed because of one family, because of Pierre Elliott Trudeau, who was a Marxist NDP guy before he became a liberal. I had a lot, had a, was super friendly with Fidel Castro. You know, I don't, America, America allowed this. America allowed Pierre Elliott Trudeau to go back and forth to Cuba 
You know, it's like I'm sure they had the CIA were keeping tabs on Pierre Elliott Trudeau, but they did they weren't doing anything. Um, you know, they were just going to allow Canada to go socialist. Sure enough, Pierre, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, once he got into power, and um, in the 60s, the the, um, the NDP, well, the, well, the um, the CC, they were known as the CC. What was it? The CCCF. Um, and they rebranded in the 60s the New Democratic Party. He eventually became a liberal, had a whole bunch of Marxist ideas, uh, and made Canada more socialist. Trudeau, Pierre Elliott Trudeau leaves. Pierre Elliott Trudeau leaves, and in comes his, you know, his son. After so many decades, Canada's become more and more and more socialist. I'm telling you, you can literally pinpoint the death of Canada to one family. You know, I mean, the socialization, uh, the socialism of Canada, which is just a goal to communism, right? And now in this election, you had foreign interference with Greta Thunberg and Obama, right? And blackface doesn't get rid of Trudeau, and all the other scandals doesn't get rid of Trudeau, the hypocrisy doesn't get rid of Trudeau, and all Trudeau really needed was Toronto and Montreal. That's all he needed. And the rest of Quebec went to the bloc, to the separatists. That's why I said after the election that the bloc... Uh, sorry, the, that the separatists were the main winners of this election. People who, separatists in the West, and the separatists in Quebec. But Quebec, if they expect more money, if the West leaves, they're never going to get, they're never going to get their, the money they want, because Albert, um, Ontario's broke. So, so anyway, to finish off, I think we should become a republic, I think or it's a different form of system where the West has more say. Where the West has more say, where they have more autonomy, as much autonomy as, as, as Quebec, at the same time, at the same time, we're a united country. Or, we're all going to be American soon. <laughs> you know, we're all going to be American. And, um... I, I just, just see John A. MacDonald and George A. Brown and uh, D. John, uh, Diefenbaker and Mackenzie, uh, William Lyon, Mackenzie King, and just they're all rolling and like, what are you doing? I mean, it really is sad. It's sad where we are. And, uh, but I think this is the whole balkanization it's planned or if it's not planned it's there's um there's problem reaction solutions by the same groups and they're going to put forward the solution as well north american union and i think that's where we're heading so what happened to alberta how alberta got all you know divided with the east that same group that has de destroyed Alberta's economy is going to put forward the idea once the West breaks up um, North American Union. And Trudeau will get his little job in, in New York. So I just see this as... Um, I'm not saying Wexit is compromised. I'm not saying it's fake. I'm just saying... It will be exploited, like Alberta has been exploited, for particular goals that are not, that are separate from just the West independence. That's only just ah now that's there. Here we go now. Now the balkanization starts, and now we have some weaker economies. I mean, look at the look at the European Union. You know, um, the heads of it are all German. The heads of the EU in Brussels, 
are all German. Um, just for the strongest nation in Europe is Germany. Um, and how interesting. A little history lesson. Uh, that uh, um, Hitler's goal, I mean, he was a national socialist, socialist, a national socialist. But an, interesting that he, not much of a nationalist when he wanted to conquer, he, he invaded Poland. You're a nationalist, you're very, you know, um, uh, you know, your country, you're very, um, what is it, what's it called, protect, um, um, you don't want to get in war, you know, uh, they, they've labeled Trudeau, uh, they, they've labeled, labeled Trump this, you know, that, you know, he wants, he doesn't want to get into war and all that, well, Hitler was the opposite. He invaded, he invaded Poland, then he invaded Austria, and then he, you know, he just, his goal was to control all of Europe. Well, what's the EU? Right? Erased all the borders. They're all little nations. They take their orders, you know, all their stuff is going on in Brussels, right? There are nations in quotations, right? So they want to do that in North America while having one or two countries that are, you know, which will have the power. And yeah, I think I would think it would be the United States and, uh, well, the West. Um, you know, maybe Alberta. But Alberta's already being uh, bought up by foreign interests. You know, there's already, um, I think the Saudi Arabia is... Uh, buying up a lot of northern <laughs> a lot of northern alberta so i don't know so again this is why i see it's there's something else in play you know and like i said just to finish off my our, our poor uh four founding fathers they're they're just um they're just rolling in their grave anyhow you'll have a good one god bless canada as long as it exists, and, uh, yeah, no Canada. You all have a good one.